Hi guys, my name is Vera. I'm an artist illustrator, surface pattern designer and online educator. I teach uh, digital illustration online in such programs as Procreate, Adobe Fresco or Affinity Designer. And this video is dedicated to a huge update by Serif. Every program that they have in their creative suite has moved to version 2. This video will be only a very short introduction to the topic. I just wanted to give you this first overview of the new affinity. Here it is. <laughs> I will be making more um, advanced or more detailed tutorials and uh, courses. If you'd like to stay notified, you can either uh, follow me here or subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, or you can consider subscribing to my newsletter where I'm informing you about the big updates in the digital illustration world and about any upcoming tutorials and courses. I would like to address here the question, should you upgrade to version 2? What are the biggest uh, points that they added to the new program? Like what is big? What has changed that really made the impact? That um, makes a difference between version 1 and version 2? And also what are some really minor points that kind of annoyed me because they were changed or they disappeared? I'm focusing here only on Affinity Designer for iPad, but there have been uh, big updates to every version of a piece of software that uh, Serif has. So um, that will also apply to Affinity Designer for uh, the laptop, the desktop uh, version. But in here I will focus only on the iPad version because that's what I'm using. I asked uh, the good people uh, from Serif if it's actually an option to stay in the old version. To be honest, I got a little bit, maybe not upset, but mildly annoyed that there is going to be such a big change in the interface in particular, because last month, it was only last month, I rolled out um, a new course, which was uh, an introduction to Affinity Designer. And the focus of this class was basically to uh, find your way around the interface. So it's showing the interface, how to move across documents and within the documents, what are the handy gestures. And on one hand, I am relieved to say that pretty much everything that I'm teaching that is uh, revolving around the old version still applies to the new, to the new version. Um, I work uh, pretty much heavily focusing on gestures, uh, the two finger swipe or the two finger tap, the three finger swipe, power duplicates, everything kind of stayed the same in the uh, new version, but there's a whole bunch of new things and new features that was added to the new one. And this is why you should consider upgrading to version two. So I kind of already answered the question, would I switch from version one to version two? Because um, you can stay with the previous one, but I highly recommend that you actually switch to this one. When it comes to the old version, towards um, the end of my work <laughs> this month, I really struggled with the program freezing and um, I encountered some imperfections. So whenever I wanted to, for example, test my pattern, I usually test it in another program such as uh, Procreate. I found uh, some glitches and some issues because my patterns were not repeating properly and there were some small, really annoying lines whenever I tried to put the pattern together. And I tested it across uh, different file formats such as exporting my pattern tile in JPEG and PNG. And um, I did the same test on the new version. So I exported exactly the same file in a PNG format and tested it in Procreate. And the difference was, I don't know if it's a bug, the old version, there were glitches and the pattern was not perfect. And the new version, the pattern was perfect. There were no glitches, there were no annoying lines that basically uh, destroy your pattern tile. So even if um, the new features do not make such a huge difference for your workflow, I think it's better to switch to version 2 because it's less buggy, uh, at least as far as I tested it for those couple of weeks. It's less buggy, I think it will be more reliable and I hope that it will crash less, um, especially if I'm working with really, really big files. Okay, so let's have a look at some uh, bigger changes in the new iPad app. When you open the new version 2 uh, Affinity Designer app, 
you will see that uh, you're in the live dog view. This is uh, here, the live dog view, and it has changed a little bit. For example, the menu that you choose from, instead of being here above uh, your documents, it moved now to the left side, which I actually like because I think it's a little bit more clean. Just as a reminder, before that it just looked like this, there was no menu on the left side, everything was here. I think this one looks more professional and it feels, for me personally, it feel, feels easier to use. Also, when you click here on the Affinity logo, you have some extra options that you can choose from. For example, in your uh, project, if you're, let's say here, if you're in a project folder, you could click on the logo and you can close all the documents at the same time, which saves you a lot of time because before that you needed to go manually to every project and uh, click on it and close it one by one. So our menu moved here to the left side. You have the logo options. Then here you go to your, basically something like your homepage to your live dogs view. Now here, when you tap on new, that's pretty self-explanatory. You create a new document and they have introduced some very, very, very handy presets categories, uh, such as print, uh, press ready, photo, web, uh, some uh, popular devices, dimensions, architectural. And this is, for instance, a category that I created because you have an option here to create uh, on this plus icon here, a new preset. And here you can create a new category. I really like working in pixels. Uh, I got used to it uh, this way. So I was able to hit on that symbol here and create a new category, which I labeled pixels and then to add one of my most commonly used um, artboard in 4000 uh, pixels square. So if you click on it, you will see I have my uh, favorite settings for this document already saved. And in this way, you can build a very nice library of the formats for your documents that you use um, a lot. I think uh, overall, this new documents uh, creation section is a really nice upgrade and I really like, like it much more compared with the old version. This button allows you to edit your current preset and this button, which is like multiple, something like multiple squares on top of each other as the files. If you click on it, you are able to edit this entire uh, section here. You can delete um, any document uh, presets that you don't need and you can also move them around by holding this uh, hamburger menu and then uh, holding the icon and then dragging it to uh, where you want it. So this is much more customizable and it feels nice and intuitive. Also in this uh, live dogs view, what I really, really like is, first of all, if you want to close a document, you just, let's say I want to close this one because it's empty, I don't need it. You just click on this cross and then it asks you if you would like to close the document and you close it. So deleting, I think, is faster. And second of all, if you further want to edit, at first when I was testing the beta, um, I didn't know where the other options went. It's very handy. You just use your finger and you swipe to the left. And here you can uh, edit uh, the name of the document. You can duplicate it. Or if you're in a project, you can move it out of the project over here. Now let's open a sample document, for example, this postcard file, and let's see add some changes within the document view. I will locate the same document in the old version and open it in a new window so that we can make a comparison. So here we are in the old version. There's a lot kind of missing here uh, in this upper part. We have the left side menu and we have the right side menu. And every time you're in a, like choose a given option from the menu. For example, right now I'm on the move tool. You have this context menu that differs depending on what tool you're using from your menu. This context um, section will change. And what is new in this uh, new version is that the icons look a little bit different. They have some new colors and the context menu moved entirely to this upper bit of the screen. So we have some new icons and their position is also new, which will initially take some time to get used to. And uh, at first I was a bit like, oh no, <laughs> things have changed. But I promise to you one day working with the tool and you really get used to it fast.
So here, this upper left corner, it's the same. You can switch between the designer persona, the pixel persona and the export persona. Here in the hamburger menu, three uh, horizontal lines, you have the document settings, so it's pretty much the same. Then you have the three dots, the edit options, you know, things like duplicating, cutting, copy pasting. Then you have the move options. Here you have the ordering options, flip and rotate. This is very handy. Alignment options. I actually like that this uh, has been separated and has been moved here because I use the align center option uh, quite frequently, so I'm happy it's a little bit more accessible. Next, you have Boolean operations. Next, you have the selecting options. Then you have um, the options to select same and select, select object. I use this option quite a lot whenever I want to find a particular uh, color fill and then change it very fast to another color. Then this little magnifying glass are the viewing options. This option, the next one, gives you the uh, preview guides such as bleed, margins, uh, the grid. And something that I'm mildly, mildly <laughs> irritated with is that uh, snapping has been moved here. And also one thing that I'm really missing here is the delete option. I can still use here the three fingers uh, swipe down option, which opens the quick menu. And I could use uh, the option to delete here. But you will see, I really liked it that both uh, snapping was here in the old version and the delete option was here. Meh. So I'm kind of disappointed that it disappeared, but I think it has a lot to do with the way I work with my workflow. I, I'm already in the zone when I'm creating uh, my patterns in Affinity Designer. So I got used to certain steps and I'm pretty sure that when I get used to this version, it won't be such a big issue. Snapping uh, is really important for me because I often put uh, some tiles together or I create live previews. So I use it quite a lot. And um, sometimes I just like to, you know, draw with my Apple Pencil with my right hand and then to make uh, some extra operations with my left hand. That's why I liked my delete button and my snapping button over here because <laughs> it was very fast, but oh well. So I have already shown you the quick access menu. Uh, you either long press, and this opens this uh, quick access menu, or you use the three uh, finger swipe down. This uh, quick access menu contains uh, frequently used operations such as duplicate, if you want to cut something or copy paste or delete. There's a new uh, command controller. Uh, as far as I know, this particular functionality uh, helps people who want to switch from the desktop version, um, people who are used to working basically on laptops with keyboards to iPad. And this is where you can combine using some uh, commands instead of regular gestures. But my preferred way of working is uh, to use gestures instead of commands. So I will not be focusing on this option, but you can definitely read about it more in the help center. Just like in the old version, you have the handy question mark. If you hold uh, on it, you can see uh, this little cheat sheet that shows you um, what is what. <laughs> and Starting from the left side, you will see that the majority of the changes have not changed, but there are three, I think three, uh, um, new powerful new features in Affinity Designer that I would like to draw your attention to. We finally have a shape builder option. We have the knife tool. This is new. This is very handy. You can basically, basically cut your shapes and uh, divide them and put them in a different order. And the third powerful new feature is uh, the option to uh, use the vector warp where you can uh, create um, warp settings uh, with your objects in a non-destructive way without uh, destroying the original layer. That was uh, the very first glimpse into the version 2 of Affinity Designer for iPad. I would love to know your opinion, so please, please leave a comment uh, in the comment section below. Have you already downloaded the new version? What is it that you like? What is it that you look forward to using? What is it that you're excited about? Or quite on the contrary, what are the things that annoy you or that you struggle with? Perhaps I could help you with uh, some handy tutorial in the future. Stay tuned on my YouTube channel or through my newsletter for more updates. 
and for more detailed uh, tutorials on this version 2 Affinity Designer. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon!